Chapter 12, Airwaves. Within a week after the article was published in the Westfield Gazette, the kids at the junior high and the kids at the high school had stopped using the word pen and had started using the word brindle. They loved it. Nick became sort of a hero for kids all over town, and he quickly learned that being a hero, even if you're only a local hero, isn't a free ride. It has a price. People noticed Nick when he walked into his dad's hardware store or when he stood in line at the Penny Pantry to buy a candy bar. He could feel it when someone recognized him, and it made him shy and awkward. Kids at school started expecting him to be clever and funny all the time, and even for a kid as smart as Nick, that was asking a lot. Every teacher, the school secretary, the principal, even the school's nurse and the custodian all seemed to be watching, always watching. His parents were great about everything. True, his mom had been upset when the article first came out, and so had his dad. Nick had said, but I didn't do anything wrong, Mom, and neither did that lady from the newspaper. And his parents could see that he was right. The things in the article were true, and the truth is the truth, and nothing could be done about it now. Even though it made them uncomfortable to have their boy talked about all over town, secretly, Nick's mom and dad were pleased. After all, a brand new word is pretty amazing. This amazing thing. There, Nicholas was quite a fellow, no getting around it. Someone else in town thought this brand new word was pretty amazing, too. Bud Lawrence had lived all his life in Westfield, and when he was only 13, 19 years old, he had saved enough money to make an investment. He looked around for a good idea and then bought the first Dairy Queen in the state. After a few years, he bought a McDonald's restaurant. That was almost 30 years ago, and these two restaurants had made him rich, one of Westfield's leading citizens. When Bud Lawrence saw the article about the new word, he had his lawyer file a preliminary trademark claim on the word Frindle. Within four days, he had set up a small company that was selling cheap plastic ballpoint pens specially imprinted with the word Frindle. He sold 3,000 Frindles the first week, and they sold so fast that stores all over Westfield couldn't keep them in stock. Then just as quickly, kids stopped asking for Frindles. The sales slowed down and Bud Lawrence started thinking about other projects. A week later, it was Halloween. The leaves started falling, and it seemed like the town was going to quiet down. And it would have if it hadn't been for Alice Lunderson. Alice lived in Betherly, a town seven miles away from Westfield, and she worked part-time for the local CBS TV station in Carrington, a town of about 75,500 people. When there were important area news, disasters like floods or tornadoes, or sometimes if she came across little stories that seemed cute or original, Alice would call the station news manager in Carrington. If it was a good story, or if it was a day when not much else was happening in the world, then the TV station would send out a van with a camera crew to shoot some videotape. Alice subscribed to all the small town newspapers in the area to keep up with the local events. Most of them were published on Thursday, and they arrived at her house by Monday or Tuesday. Then it took her a day or so to look through them all. On Wednesday morning, she finally saw the article in the Westfield Gazette about the word war. She read it through twice and looked carefully at the class photograph. She was sure that this story was a winner. The TV station manager in Carrington agreed with her. She called the CBS station in Boston because sometimes Boston picked up stories from the Carrington newsroom. The woman in Boston thought the story had some real zip to it, so she called the network news editor in New York. When the facts of the Westfield Gazette article got to New York, the staff there loved it. They looked over the schedule sheet for the week and decided it would be the perfect closing story for the CBS Evening News for the next day, Thursday. Orders flew back through the telephone links from New York to Boston to Carrington, Beverly. By noon, Wednesday at noon, Alice had a go order to take the story all the way. It was her first piece to get onto the national news, and 20 million viewers would see it. Alice London... And Lunderson and her camera crew stood on Mrs. Granger's front porch Wednesday after school. Mrs. Granger was not impressed by all the lights and the microphones. She looked right into the camera and said, I have always said that the dictionary is the finest tool ever made for educating young minds, and I still say that. 
children need to understand that there are rules about words and language and that those rules have a history that makes sense. And to pretend that a perfectly good English word can be replaced by a silly made up word just for the fun of it. Well, it's not something I was ready to stand by and watch without a fight. And you, have you lost that fight, Mrs. Granger? Asked the reporter. Mrs. Granger turned her eyes up to nearly full power as she looked into the camera and with a pale smile, she said, it's not over yet. When Alice and the crew showed up at Nick's house, the Allen family was ready for them. Mom and dad sat on the couch with Nick between them. Nick squinted into the lights. His mom had worked out with Nick that she that he could say and what he couldn't say. You remember, young man, she had told him as she combed his hair. These reporters are just looking for a quick story that will make us some excitement. But you have to stay here and live in this town, so mind your P's and Q's. As they sat down on the couch, Mrs. Allen had her foot on top of Nick's under the coffee table. And if she pushed down, it meant that the reporter had just asked a question that she was going to answer for him. Mrs. Allen did not trust reporters. So tell me, Nick, why did you make up this new word, Frindle, asked Alice Lunderson. Nick gulped and said, well, my teacher, Mrs. Granger, said all the words in the dictionary were made up by people and that they mean that what they mean because we say they do. So I thought it would be fun to just make up a new word and see if it was true. And were you surprised when Mrs. Granger got mad about that? Asked Alice with a smile. There was a push on Nick's foot. And his mother said, we never felt that Mrs. Granger got angry. When everyone started using the word friendle, it just got to be a disruption, that's all. She's really a very fine teacher. Yeah, said Nick. I mean, a I learned a lot about words and without her, I wouldn't have. So what's next for you in the new word? Alice was wrapping it up. She could see that Nick and his parents were not going to be pushed into saying anything controversial. So she just kept it light and happy. Well, so Nick, the funny thing is, even though I invented it, it's not my word anymore. Friendo belongs to everyone now. And I guess everyone will figure out what happens next. Alice also had a short chat with a worried looking Mrs. Chatham and a smiling Bud Lawrence, maker of the official Frindle. Then she shot her opening bit and her closing bit, and the camera crew drove back to Carrington to edit all the pieces and put them together in a two-minute news story. The next night, when all the serious news about wars and oil prices and world food supplies had been talked about on the CBS Evening News, the anchor man looked into the camera and smiled. He said, it is believed by many that the word quiz was made up in 1791 by a Dublin theater manager named Daly. He had bet someone that he could invent a brand new word in the English language, and he chalked up the word Q-U-I-Z onto every wall and building in town. The next morning, there it was, and within a week, people all over Ireland were wondering what it could mean. And a new word had been created. Quiz is the only word in the English that was invented by one person for no particular reason. That is until now. And there is a new word, Frindle. And here is Alice Lunderson in Westfield, New Hampshire with the story. Alice came on the screen with a short introduction. Then right there on TV, Mrs. Granger and Nick and Bud Lawrence and Nick's mom were talking to 20 million people about Frindles. One of those 20 million people was a producer for The Late Show with David Letterman. And another one was the, of those 20 million people was a staff writer for People magazine. And another one was a writer for 321 Contact magazine for kids. Dozens of other writers and producers and marketing people saw that story on the news. And all of them smelled a great story. During the next three weeks, every man, woman, and child in America heard about this funny new word that kids were using instead of the word pen. And kids in Ohio and Iowa and New York and Texas and California started using it too. But Lawrence was suddenly flooded with orders for anything with the word friendle on it, and he quickly got interested again. But there were complications. Bud's lawyer said, you see that stack of orders there? Trouble. That's what that is. We got a trademark filed, but it's only like an application. 
the whole country knows that that little kid made up the word. And unless you make a deal with his dad, you're going to end up with nothing, maybe even a big fat lawsuit. That kid owns the word. When Mr. Allen came home at lunchtime, his wife told him that he had to call Bud Lawrence. It's something about the new word. This was not good news to Tom Allen. He was sick and tired of all the fuss, and being away from the hardware store so much while all this nonsense was happening had put him weeks behind on his paperwork. He'd be lucky now to get his Christmas order in time. Even though he didn't really want anything to do with it, Bud was an old friend. So on the way back to the store, Nick's dad went to Bud Lawrence's office. Tom, good to see you, said Bud. He stood up and walked around his um, seat to shake hands. Have a seat. Tom sat down easily, and Bud pulled another chair over. Ever see Westfield so stirred up about anything in your life? You and Ginny must be pretty proud of that boy of yours. Bud couldn't remember Nick's name. Tom shifted in his chair and nodded. Yeah, he's quite something, that's for sure. But I tell you, Bud, I'm ready for all of it to die down and blow away. Too much fuss. Instantly, Bud saw how to get what he wanted. Well, Tom, I'm afraid it's not really going to go away. Looks like something started up, and people are real interested. You probably saw those bright red ball, ball points around town with the word Frendel on them. That's my doing. Just testing the waters. But your boy, he owns that word. I got my lawyer to apply for a trademark a few weeks back because that's just the way I am. New thing comes along, I like to be right there in the middle of it. He grinned at Tom Allen and Tom smiled back weakly. Right now, I got a shirt printer in Massachusetts and another one in Chicago and another one in Los Angeles making t-shirts with the word Frindle above a picture of a pen. I mean, a Frindle, of course. Each supplier has ordered so far for over 20,000 shirts. Profit on every one of those is going to be two, maybe three dollars. And I'm talking with some big pen and pencil companies in Hong Kong and Japan about a deal that could be worth some really big money. They've seen this Frindle thing in the media and they want to buy the rights to their trademark and make it a new line of Frindles for kids. I'm not kidding. This is a hot, hot idea. But guess right. Just the thought of all this made Tom shrink back uncomfortably in his chair. It was way too much fuss. Tom, let me be direct with you. As a boy's guardian, you need to do the right thing about all this. I'd like to see where all this is going to go. I'm going to take some rest, spend some money, see what happens. But I need your permission. I need signatures on these trademark papers, and I need to strike a deal with you about permission to use that trademark. I know it seems like a big ruckus about a word, but we can't, just can't tell what's to come of it unless we take some steps. Bud pointed at the papers on his desk. That's a contract, and it's fair and honest. It gives your boy 30% of whatever profits I might make. That's a fair royalty, generous for this kind of deal. So what do you say? Make sense? Let me take care of all the fuss and see if some good doesn't come of it. Oh, the papers and the pen were there on the desk next to Tom. He looked at Bud, then reached over, picked up the pen, and signed both copies of the trademark papers and three copies of the contract. I've got no reason to doubt you one bit, Bud, and I sure don't want to mess with any of this myself. Is that it? He asked, standing up. Not quite, Tom. Here. Then Bud Lawrence handed Nick's dad a check for $2,250. What's this for? That's what I owe Nick for the sale of Frindles from the first three weeks, explained Bud with a smile. Tom looked at the check and said, this is terrific, Bud, and I'm really glad about it because it'll sure help with Nick's college. But I wish you'd just keep this between us. If Nick knew, he'd probably stop mowing lawns, and I'd never get him to save another penny. So just between us, okay? Bud said, sure, Tom, I understand, just between us. And they shook hands. Mr. Allen left Bud's office and walked across the street to the savings bank. He set up a trust account for Nick, and the bank manager said he could make arrangements with Mr. Lawrence so any money would be deposited automatically. That sounded good to Tom Allen. If he never heard another word about it, that would be fine. As Nick's dad walked slowly back to the hardware store, he wondered if things were ever going to be the same again in his quiet little town. Chapter 13, Ripples. 
but life did settle back to normal in Westfield. More leaves fell, Thanksgiving came, then the first snow, then Christmas, and more snow. Fall and winter seemed to calm everything down and drive everyone into their own houses. Things were calmer at Lincoln Elementary School, too. Brindle mania was over. That didn't mean the word was gone. Oh, no, not at all. All the kids and even some of the teachers used the nude word. At first, it was on purpose. Then it became a habit. And by the middle of February, Brindle was just a word, like door or tree or hat. People in Westfield barely noticed it anymore. But in the rest of the country, things were hopping. Brindle was on the move. In hundreds of little towns and big cities from coast to coast, kids were using the new word and parents and teachers were trying to stop it. What had happened in Westfield happened over and over and over again. But Lawrence couldn't have been happier. There were Frindle shirts and sunglasses and erasers and notebooks and paper and dozens of other items. The new line of Frindles imported from Japan were a big hit and now there was talk of selling them in Japan and Europe as well. The checks that went into Nick's trust fund got bigger and bigger. Bud opened his own factory in Westfield to handle Frindle baseball caps, which created jobs for 22 people. And in March, the town council voted to put up a little sign on the post below the town's name along Route 302. It said, home of the original Frindle. And Mrs. Granger, she seemed to have given up, or perhaps she had been ordered to. No one knew. Her poster about the forbidden word had quietly disappeared from the bulletin board, and kids were not staying after school writing sentences anymore. It was business as usual, except for one thing. Everyone in fifth grade got at least one word wrong on his or her spelling test each week. Every week, the first word at the top of Mrs. Granger's list was pen. And each Friday during the spelling test, Every kid spelled it F-R-I-N-D-L-E. Nick was sort of a celebrity for a while. Everyone had seen him on The Late Show and on Good Morning America and two or three other TV shows. John and Chris and all his friends kept asking about what it was like to ride in a limousine. After a week or two, though, it was old news and everyone seemed to forget it and move on. The only person who couldn't quite forget about everything was Nick. 